Hey, Shakers, and welcome to Worth Your Salt, the podcast that shakes up your marketing game in the health and wellness industry. Worth Your Salt is brought to you every Thursday by Salt Marketing. Salt Marketing helps health and wellness practitioners build trust and authority to attract a steady stream of inbound wellness seekers. For more information, you can visit us online at saltmarketing.co. I'm Jennifer Oroqua, Story Brand Certified Guide, Marketing Strategist with Salt Marketing, and your host for today's episode of Worth Your Salt. Now in Charleston, South Carolina, where good food meets Southern charm, it's common to indulge in shrimp and grits, she crab soup and coconut cake. But my guest today is helping Charleston find healthy alternatives by making it easy to eat well. She crafts and delivers healthy meals right to her clients' doorsteps. Joy Onero is not just any entrepreneur. She's the passionate franchise owner of the Charleston location of Project Lean Nation. With a fervent dedication to health and wellness, Joy's journey is a testament to the power of determination, community, and a belief in the transformative potential of a franchise in the health industry. Joy is taking us on a captivating ride today through the heart of health and wellness in Charleston and sharing her vision for a healthier future. Joy, I can't wait to learn more about this. Thank you so much for joining me on Worth Your Salt. Hey, Jen. Thank you so much for having me today. I'm so excited about this. I'm hoping you can share a little bit about your personal journey and what inspired you to become a franchise owner with Project Lean Nation. Yeah, so it's kind of a long story, but I'll I'll keep it short and sweet. I've been in health and fitness for several, several years in a couple different capacities. And one of the main things that I was always hearing from clients and friends and members at studios and gyms were, you know, man, I'm doing all these things right. I'm working out every day. I'm drinking my water. How come I'm not seeing results? And, you know, that was something where it was not really at the time, I didn't have the time Mm -hmm. um, to be focusing on uh, that part and like the nutrition part of clients and stuff like that in their journey. Um, And it was just like, hey, eat protein, drink water, eat your fruits and vegetables. Mm -hmm. I'm going to train you. I'm going to, you know, teach classes and stuff like that and really focus on the fitness side of it. So just hearing that over, you know, year after year, we're just hearing frustrations from clients and everything and just people in general. And then hearing about uh, Project Lee Nation, I heard about it probably maybe four years ago now. And I was like, man, that's amazing. Mm-hmm. I love this idea where, yes, we're still like focused on encouraging people on their fitness journeys and in being in that community, but then being the side of it where, hey, we're the ones now that can help you you know, with your nutrition so that you can be reaching goals, health and fitness goals that you have. What unique aspects of Project Lean Nation attracted you as a franchisee, the business model, you know, compared to other opportunities? What was it? Yeah, no, for sure. And, um, you know, fast forward another year. So about three years ago, my husband and I were looking into opening up a franchise or opening up our own business or something like that. I think the biggest thing or a couple of the biggest things with Project Lean Nation was obviously melding good nutrition and encouraging fitness and like having this community um, was huge. Mm. Both me and my husband are really passionate about um, creating community for people and or hooking them up into a community of people that already exists or whatever. So for us, like that's been huge in our personal lives, being around people that are like-minded and that are always going to be encouraging us and pushing us to be better versions of ourselves. So wanting to be able to give that back was really important. Um, in a business setting. And then also, you know, not just here's some food, good luck, we'll see you later. <laughs> um, but having that, you know, we at, at both of our stores and at all stores, we have an in-body scale. So being able to actually give people data um, that they can be checking their progress as often as they want to. And so not only are they getting you know, accountability and support from us and from our staff, but they also have raw data that they're able to look at and track their progress as well. Mm -hmm. And then coming to us for their food, you know, so um, just it covered a a couple of several different bases for us. And then, you know, one of one thing that I always hear people say, I'm like, uh, you know, you go with your gut and I'm, I'm very much a go with your gut type of person Uh and felt good about it. We were like, okay, this is, this feels really good on all, on all levels for us. So I love what you said about metrics and benchmarking, you know, as a marketer, those are the things that we lean into because that's how you show progress. So I, I love that that's one aspect of it, but I want to go back to what you were saying about community. I'm really curious about what personal experiences or, or values of yours influence your decision to become a franchise owner. My husband and I, we've always found great communities in our lives that have really challenged us and helped us become 
better people, better, better spouses to each other, better parents, better at our fitness and whatever. And that's something that knowing how valuable that's been in our lives and finding those communities over the years that have really fed into us has been so important. And I think our passion and our goal is to be able to provide that for people and to give back on a completely different level. Probably one of the most fulfilling things with Project Lee Nation and and having this franchise, watching people grow over time and seeing the things that, um, you know, you have a little bit of impact on and you're like, man, they're killing it. And and I was part of that. And I was, I was able to see this happen. Mm -hmm. We realized that we're all, we're all on this journey together. And I think finding a business and a company that sees that and then that values that and that's here to nurture the growth of people um, is really huge for us. So I'm curious because, you know, obviously you've been in the health and wellness industry for quite some time. You've looked at it from sort of the employee side of things and now from the franchise owner side of things. So, so what's different there? What's different about being a franchise owner? Um, so, you know, in the past, we actually did own a small personal training business. And so obviously not franchised at all. Mm -hmm. It was very much like at the, you know, ground level and, you know, grinding day in and day out. And I honestly, um, when it comes to the work side of it, I would say it's very similar. Mm -hmm. You're still in a community where you're trying to build awareness and let people know that you even exist. So that grind and like that constant pushing forward and getting your name out there and meeting people and making connections and networking and everything like that. I don't think that that's been different at all. Mm -hmm. But what has been different is obviously being with a franchise and especially with Project Lee Nation, the support that other stores that were already open were being given Mm -hmm. and hearing from those store owners. Yeah, this is worth it. Like the Mm -hmm. headquarters and the support staff are literally at your beck and call 24 seven, if you need them. And that was something we were like, we know that we're going to need that because we've never worked in a franchise setting before. Mm -hmm. It's now been, it'll be three years in January. So in just Mm -hmm. a couple of months that we will have us opened up our first store. And that hasn't changed. My Mm -hmm. outlook on our support that we get from our headquarters and from the support team has not changed at all. They're phenomenal. And I would say that that's probably, that's the biggest difference. Yes, you're still working very hard, but having the support has been huge. So now that you've been in it for several years, tell me a little bit about what the core mission and values of Project Lead Nation are and how do they align with your own aspirations and life goals? You know, initially it's providing healthy, convenient, good meals at, you know, an affordable cost to everybody. And then for, you know, it's also then providing that extra level of support. And that's where, you know, yes, eating healthy and having good nutritious food has always been important to me and my family and something that I've always been preaching and now being able to provide that. But then with that extra level of community accountability, education, you know, you'd be surprised, you know, I've I've had people come in my stores before they're like, what's protein? (laughs) You know, (laughs) it kind of brings you back and you're like, Oh, wow. Uh Like, I've been in this industry for so long. I don't even think about that. People don't know what protein is or people Mm -hmm. don't know what, you know, certain things are, or what's a good carb, what's a bad carb and all the things, you know, so bring that level of education then too, where it's like, wow, this person had no idea that Mm -hmm. maybe they just need some more protein in their life. This is Mm -hmm. how they can get it, you know? So being able to provide that education as well um, has been huge. And so I always say, I'm like, instead of just like, slinging meals and okay, how many, how much food can we sell this week? You know, Mm -hmm. I would not be passionate about doing that. (laughs) Mm -hmm. I would not be waking up seven days a week for almost three years doing that. That just wouldn't last for Mm -hmm. me. What I am excited about is providing that support, providing that education and trying to build that community for people. That's what gets me out of bed seven days. Nice. All right, Joy, you've provided some outstanding insight into the life of a PLN franchisee. We do need to take a quick sponsorship break right now. But when we return, I want to talk about some of the challenges you've seen and your unique marketing strategies. Stay with us. The Worth Your Soul podcast is grateful to our partners and sponsors. If you were using AI to produce your messaging, The unfortunate truth is that your competitors probably are too, creating a market where everyone sounds the same. Everyone is on the same social media platforms, saying the same things. 
The one differentiator today is messaging. If you can clearly communicate your brand story, you can captivate your audience and make your story their story. That's why Salt Marketing offers the brand identity and messaging guide to help you build authority and trust in the marketplace. Inside your guide, you'll get a picture of who your clients are and your distinct brand personality. We'll show you how to communicate in your brand voice and you'll learn what to say to invite clients into your unique brand story. Plus, you will get a marketing playbook to help you infuse your brand messaging in your emails, social media, sales funnels and content. Get started today. Visit us at saltmarketing.co slash services to learn more. That's saltmarketing.co slash services because the best differentiator you have is your unique messaging. I'm back here on the Worth Your Salt podcast with Joy Wenro, owner of the Charleston, South Carolina franchise of Project Lean Nation. So Joy, what are some of the biggest challenges you've faced as a franchise owner in this industry? How have you overcome them? Good question. So we opened the first store in January of 2021. Um, so thinking, you know, at that time, we were still wearing masks, we were still coming out of this pandemic and wondering what's going to happen economy wise and, and costs and everything like that were rising and starting to rise. So meal prep for us and like in our community was definitely viewed as a more of a luxury item and mm -hmm. more of something where it was for the for the athlete or for the person that was really focused on, you know, hitting some significant like health and wellness goals and fitness goals and everything. They wanted to pay that little bit of extra for the convenience of having healthy prepared meals and everything. And now fast forward, you know, a couple of years down the road, I still have a huge base of athletes and fitness professionals and whatnot that they believe in this, like they know nutrition is mm -hmm. so important. Um, but now I'm seeing uh, more and more clients coming in that are like, you know, I, I understand that this is for, you know, health and, and wellness and everything like that. But honestly, this price point makes way more sense than me going to the grocery store sometimes, mm -hmm. you know? So it's been interesting to see that shift. Um, whereas I think initially I was a little getting a little bit concerned as costs were going up and like, man, are people going to be, are we still going to be relevant? You know, as we've been talking to our customers too, that's kind of been another way that we're educating them. Like, you know, this is what's your grocery bill and just having them compare and them do the math themselves and kind of see that. Yeah eating healthier is actually possible mm -hmm. and, and and affordable nowadays. Pivoting for sure is important. Mm -hmm. Probably our other most significant challenge is staffing. Mm -hmm. I know I know some people are like they put out ads and it's got Instagram ads and and really advertise that they're looking for people and um I don't know. I haven't had tons of luck with that on my end. Mm -hmm. What I what I personally do is I seek out people that I like. <laughs> So it mm -hmm. sounds kind of silly, but, uh, you know, I'll get to know a customer well and I'll be like, mm -hmm. you know what, you're a really cool person. And I like the energy that you give out and you're always happy to be here and happy to talk to me. And, and I'm not paying you to do that. You know, so it's like, <laughs> right? I love that. You know, I always say, I'm like, you can't teach somebody to have a good personality or good attitude. I can teach them to, you know, um, help with an in-body or I can teach them to run a store or whatever, but I can't teach uh, a good personality or good attitude. So mm -hmm. that's always first and foremost, what I look for. And, um, and when I see that in somebody and that person is, you know, shining out to me, I'm like, okay, I'm like, would you like to work here? <laughs> so mm -hmm. Sometimes it's not the right time for them. And sometimes they're like, Oh my gosh, I love this idea. I would have never thought about it. You know, so yeah, interesting. So I imagine starting in January of 2021, you had some challenges around marketing. So I would love to hear a little bit about your specific marketing strategies that have been particularly effective in growing your Project Lean Nation franchise. So like I said, you know, back then we were still masks and you know most gyms still had like limited capacities class schedules were shortened they weren't necessarily allowing a lot of community involvement and so there wasn't a lot of like cross pollination there wasn't any mm. you know vendor fairs were not happening well health and wellness fairs weren't happening so like those those things that you would typically would be your go to weren't happening mm. so we got really creative with Instagram mm -hmm. okay how can we 
get people to come in our store if we can't go anywhere to tell them about us. And so what we've been doing, and it's, uh, you know, we do it to this day, find a gym post or whatever, and we see people that comment on it, we'll send them a message or we'll comment on it. We'll be like, hey, stop in the store, grab a free shake. We'd love to see you check us out, you know, and it's just been an open invitation that we've been giving people throughout the last um, two and a half plus years of, hey, we're not trying to sell you anything. And we're not trying to, you know, entice you with a deal or anything like that. We just want you to stop in our store so we can give you something for free and you can see what we do. And it literally hasn't cost us anything other than right. us have using our time to do that. So that's been probably our biggest way that we've been doing like our own kind of form of real marketing. Yeah. And so now you're almost three years in. Uh, we, I think we can safely say we're post pandemic, although you just never know. <laughs> but, um, you know, in terms of community outreach now, what kind of initiatives have you undertaken to engage with the local community and build that brand awareness? So we do several different things. I kind of have I, I kind of look at my year and quarters, as I think most people do. And the goal is to fill up every quarter as many events as possible. So we're looking, obviously, for like-minded businesses. You know, um, I'm looking at um, med spas, gyms, fitness centers, personal trainers. You know, certain things like that, where it's like, hey, we'd love to either collaborate with you and host an event with you, or if they're if you're doing an event, whether it be a competition or you're doing an open house or a grand opening or whatever the case may be. We'd love to be a part of it. And how can we do that? Mm -hmm. Just kind of touching on the collab, we'll partner with, you know, different trainers and fitness trainers and kind of host our own workouts with them. We'll do a lot of collaboration with, you know, giveaways, especially on Instagram. People love, love the good Instagram giveaway where it's like, take all your friends (laughs) and get a chance Mm -hmm. to win this whole prize package. Um, And that's giving you an opportunity to get to know other small businesses in your area. And then you're building that relationship with them as well. So that's been really key Mm -hmm. for us. And then honestly, just like the good old fashioned face to face meeting and where we'll do 20 ish a month where we try to stop into like a local business or local businesses and just like give them Mm. a couple of our samples, give them some menus and just say like, Hey, we're Project Lee Nation. Just want to say we're here. So good to meet you. Here's some free samples. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, we'll let them know about different, you know, special days of the every Friday, we have $5 shake protein shake Fridays. So we'll let them know about that. We're like, Hey, if they're close Mm -hmm. by, you know, it's like, Hey, come on down on Friday. It's always $5 for a protein shake. Yeah. Just being that face to face thing, I think is really important now that we're able to do that. So that's been really helpful. Mm-hmm. So I'm wondering how you manage competition in this sector. There are lots of options for meal delivery, like even online and stuff that's mailed frozen. So what sets Project Lean Nation apart in the marketplace? I hear everybody talk to. So I hear clients that have tried every meal prep program under the sun or hearing what they have to say is, you know, is always very helpful to me. And I think some of the biggest things that I hear are, wow, like I'm not just coming here and you're not just selling me food. I'm coming here and Mm -hmm. you're actually interested in like my goals. You're actually interested in um, my family (laughs) and you're interested in what I'm doing. So Mm -hmm. I think us really trying to set ourselves apart from not just being a transactional business, but being a, hey, we're a support business. Like we're here to support you. Mm -hmm. Um, I think really sets us apart. And then, you know, it's like I... There's obviously a couple other meal prep companies in Charleston. And, you know, I always tell people, I'm like, every meal prep company is different. Everybody has a slightly different offering. And, you know, when it comes to meal prep on the local level, I always say, I'm like, we're not in competition of each other. I'm like, there's everybody Mm. offers something a little different. Like somebody may like this Mm -hmm. company for this. And that's awesome. I'm just glad they're eating healthy. Somebody may may not like mine and they want to go to somebody else. I'm like, that's cool. So, you know, there's Mm -hmm. a couple here in the local area and we're actually, you know, as business owners, we're friends with them, you know? So it's like, Mm -hmm. we have a Mm -hmm. good relationship with the other owners of other meal prep companies that are local to us. And they'll tell us, they're like, Hey, I just sent a client over to you because they weren't, they weren't into my offerings, you know? And I've done the same thing. I'm Mm -hmm. like, Hey, so-and-so I just sent a client over to you because they weren't into the specific meals that I offer, you know? So, um, I think having that 
outlook as, as, uh, you know, instead of being negative about having competition, but being positive, like building that relationship, even with your so-called competition, you know, it's like, Hey, we're all a little Mm -hmm. bit different. And that's why like, we're all going to have kind of our niche, um, customer base and stuff like that. So yeah, I love your, your outlook on, on building community in, in every aspect, but it's time for another quick break. We'll be right back after this. You're listening to the Worth Your Salt podcast, and today I'm talking with Joy Onero, franchise owner with Project Lean Nation's meal delivery service. We'd love to hear your thoughts, so be sure to join us over on Instagram, LinkedIn, or Facebook, and let us know what you think of being a franchisee. So Joy, what's your long-term vision for your Project Lean Nation franchise? How do you see it evolving in the coming years? The Mount Pleasant location specifically was the, I believe it was the fourth open ever Project Lean Nation. So it was still very mm-hmm. a new franchise group. Um, and now there's over 20 that are open and there'll be probably another 20 that'll open by the end of this year. Um, so it's a nice, it's, it's definitely been growing very quickly, which has been so exciting to see. And, you know, right now, currently uh, we own three of those stores that are currently open. And my husband and I, when we first started the Mount Pleasant one, we were like, okay, the goal is the goal is six. We want to do six. So I think um, we just, hmm. we have this number in mind where we'd like to do six. And uh, we have a couple locations, you know, that are sitting there in the back of our minds here. Um, and just, I think mm-hmm. the biggest thing, especially in, you know, the climate that we have right now with, um, again, costs and, and inflation and staffing and all these things that mm-hmm. we're, that we're juggling um, is, uh, timing, you know, we're, we're definitely not, Mm -hmm. let's just go and just do it. But we want to, we're really waiting for good timing. Um, and I feel like with the three stores that we've currently opened, you know, we had our challenges with all three of them and it was all for a reason. It just wasn't the right time. And Mm -hmm. when it was the right time they Mm -hmm. opened and they've been great, you know, so that's our, that's our long-term goal for Project Lee Nation is to have, uh, to be owners of six stores. Um, so we're halfway there. (laughs) So I would ask for aspiring franchisees who are interested in a health and wellness business. What advice would you give them when considering a franchise opportunity like Project Lean Nation? Specifically, and, and it kind of goes back to to earlier what I was saying, just with the support. Um, you know, unfortunately, I've had I have many friends that are in other franchise businesses and stuff, and they'll ask me, they're like, "Oh, oh, I'll, you know, I'll be talking about a franchise or whatever, or like some support that we've gotten or." offerings that they've, that they have for us. And they're like, man, my franchise doesn't even talk to us, you know? And, um, Mm. like I haven't heard from anybody from my franchise in a year, you know, or whatever. Mm. And, um, and I'm like, man, that must be like a lonely road (laughs) to be a small business owner, but not have a hundred percent control over everything, you know, because as a franchise owner, we Mm -hmm. are as a franchisee, you all know that, you know, there's guidelines that we have to follow and there's brand continuity Mm -hmm. and all these things. And so, no, you're not a hundred percent going rogue when you're in that franchise space, but Mm -hmm. not having like regular check-ins or knowing that you have that support if you need it must be really difficult. So I think that that for me, if I was, if, and if we ever are looking at other franchises to ever get into, that would be our number one thing. We would want to talk to other other franchise owners or other franchisees and be like, Hey, how's the support been? How do you feel like you're getting support Mm -hmm. from your headquarters and everything? Um, That's just really important to us. So where can we go to find more information about Project League Nation in general? And specifically, how can we connect with you to learn more about your journey and your offering? Yeah, for sure. Um, So projectleanation.com is the website. And if you click on there and go there, you're going to see all the different stores that are currently open. You're going to see all the ones that are in that opening process. So you'll see where they're, where they're popping up here soon in the future. Our Instagram page is, is probably the best way to see what we're doing in the Charleston community and following the journey here in Charleston that we have. Mm-hmm. And that's at Project Lean Nation CHS. Um, would be our handle for Instagram. Perfect. And of course, links to Joy's Project Lean Nation website, um, their Instagram, all of that will be available on our website at saltmarketing.co. But right now, Joy, it is time for our lightning round questions. These are a few quick questions I like to ask of every guest. Are you ready? Yes. <laughs> all right. First question is, what's the best book you've read recently? Girl, Wash Your Hair by Rachel Hollins. Um, 
it was just, I actually, I'm a, I'm a audiobooks person. So, uh, uh-huh. listening to her read that and just, it was so relatable as a mom, a wife, a business owner, all of the yep. things. It was very, um, it was just, it was refreshing. So I, enjoyed I that. agree. <laughs> I, I enjoyed that one when it came into my life as well. Um, all right. Next question. What is your favorite thing about the work that you do? The community. I know I've said that word a million times on this, uh, so yep. far, That's okay. but the yeah. people, you know, I mean, knowing the stories and knowing everything that is going on in my customers and members lives. Like I love that. I go home every day mm-hmm. and I feel so fulfilled you know, knowing that I was able to connect with people on a real level every day. So that's, that's what I love. Yeah, Nice. All right. What's the best piece of advice you've ever been given? Is it Charles Swindoll? Life is 10% what happens to you and 90% how you react. That's Very like good. been my go-to quote for many, many, many years because life mm-hmm. is hard <laughs> and mm-hmm. it's hard for everybody. And how we react to it is going to, that's what makes or breaks us. Absolutely. Yep. All right. Last question. Who or what inspires you? My grandparents, specifically my on my dad's side, have just been some of the hardest working people I've ever known. They've always given back to their community till my grandpa passed away a couple of years ago, literally till the day he passed away, always giving back to his community and the people around him. And my grandmother, who still live with us, does the same thing. She volunteers for literally every single thing you can possibly think of. And she'll do that to her last day as well. And that's something that has always influenced me growing up, seeing them doing that. That's how I'm going to be. So when I'm, I always tell people, I'm like, when I'm an old lady, I'll be signing up for every volunteer (laughs) position ever. So, um, but yeah, I love that. Yep. That's amazing. Joy, this has been so enlightening. Thank you so much for sharing your franchisee experience on this week's episode of Worth Your Salt. Thank you so much for having me. I also want to thank our listeners. If you are ready for your Worth Your Salt debut, tell us about your expertise by emailing us at grow at saltmarketing.co. Be sure to subscribe on our website so you never miss an episode. Finally, leave us a review or give the show a handful of stars wherever you get your content. That's all for this episode of Worth Your Salt. Be sure to join me again next Thursday. In the meantime, let's get out there and shake things up. And we're out. Yay. Yay. Thank you. (laughs)